Hello folks, I'm Dr. Ted Kaufman here on the Crystal Star Ranch. We're delighted that you joined us today for Dr. Ted Talks. Today we're continuing with our journey through the book We that you see behind me. The section that we start with today is Mirror, M-I-R-R-O-R. -R -R. You know you are making progress when you like what you see in the mirror. What if the mirror expressed who we were instead of how we looked? Would we still have them? <laughs> That'd tell us a lot about ourselves, I think. If your mirror were a telescope into your soul, would you allow others to peer into it? If your mirror reflected your thoughts rather than your image, Would you continue to stare into it? Why not look in a mirror and define beautiful as what you see? Difficulties are the mirrors reflecting our inner nature. If you could look into a mirror and see the ideal you, what would the differences be? Got choice? <laughs> Mistakes. The charm of the forbidden frequently overpowers the strength <laughs> to subdue one's passions. Too bad there aren't equally powerful laws protecting the people from the press as there are free speech laws protecting the people, the press from the people. When you disagree, you either need to stop loving them or start loving them more. Astronauts remind us that all the lines on a map separating us are imaginary. Now, the moon. This is a poem entitled The Man in the Moon. Is that a leer we doth perceive through yonder winter shimmering tree, the vast contrast of light and dark? I sit alone in this cold park, your muse of now's ridiculousness as you peer down on frivolous mess. Your twisted rumination clear to see you gaze down on humanity. What we have done To humankind is understood by troubled mind. Ethereal though it may well be as it peers down through naked tree to see firsthand how we may be perceived as trite humanity. A bright reminder dispersion made. The price that troubled mankind paid to be here now on spinning earth looking out in vain for valued worth in hopes we search through endless trod some waning kin with loving nod oh diamond of the darkest night rain down upon us with thy light that we may know throughout our search that you abide us from your perch that we might soon a purpose find through our minute Minuscule mind guide us with your light above to find someone's unending love. I wrote that in about 10 minutes. I sat at my desk and it just came to me and I typed as fast as I could. Sometimes I'd hit rewind to go back and pick up a line or a word. What a beautiful thing to be a vessel to bring that kind of thing to you. I'm so thankful. As the moon is a reflection of the sun, our past is a reflection of who we are. The moon is clearly female. She's a gatherer. She gleefully gathers radiant light from the sun and joyfully shares it with the whole world. <laughs> with a smile. The moon being an ex Exquisite exhibitionist has chosen the perfect blue-black velvet backdrop against which she reveals her royal, magnificent 
glowing, smiling effervescence. The moon in her vanity changes shape to continue to amaze her admirers as she leaps out for us from her sacred darkness, suspended in time and space as a motionless globe. As the moon pulls the waters of our world, you pull the waters of my soul. Oh, to have as much pull <laughs> in the night sky as the moon. The stars have their twinkle, but give me the soft, scintillating glow of the moon's smile. When I miss you too much, I just gaze at the moon. We are looking at the same moon. We are all in each country, children of the same moon. Oh, the smooth, silky, radiant tingle of the moonlight on my skin. There is no such thing as a moon burn. As the moon looks down at the earth each day, I marvel that it has not yet lost its smile. The moon, the sun's sacred reflection reflection pool. All national cemeteries are hallowed in the light of the moon. If you don't realize the moon sucks, <laughs> just look at the tides. The moon, like a beautiful woman, wows us with changing phases. The light of the moon connects mankind through time we view the same moon as Caesar and Aristotle. Two symphonies from a park bench, the music and the moon. My wife and the moon, always smiling. The moon, the golden welcoming front door of the universe. Now we move to mortality. Let my epitaph read, he left no damaged heart behind. When I am gone among those who say I am sorry, I hope there is someone who says I loved him. I was taught to respect my elders. <laughs> They're just getting harder to find. Don't worry about middle age. If you're lucky, you'll grow out of it. As I approach the winter of my years, I remember the no need to say goodbyes. The eyes and ears fear separation, but the heart and soul remind us in love there is no such thing as separation. And now, music. This is a poem entitled Out of the Soul of Music. I wrote this in just a few minutes. I am called music. I exist in the alpha and omega of time. Hear me in the wind, the pines, the waves, the coo of a newborn baby, the sound of silence as a white cloud, lonely in a blue sky, traverses the sky. When mankind arrive, I quickly stepped up to be the medium of emotions, the inspiration of thought. I have contributed regularly to the fulfillment of the discovery of the ground of being of humanity. I am a myriad of notes, a plethora of instruments, understood and appreciated by all. I like you, am here to uplift all of humankind for the rest of time. I connect and unite you all that you may dance with the world in truth, love, joy, peace, and harmony. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that make you tingle? 
Every cell in my body dances to the song Umbop by the Hansons. Comfort is found between the notes of your favorite song. The sound of your voice against the turbulence of the world is like hearing the piccolo in the New York Philharmonic. Music, the stick with which you stir the soul to dance among the clouds. Music, the soul's subtle subway into the world. Music gives voice to the joyful, the depressed, the lovers, and in country music, to those lovers lost. If silence is the fruit, bowl, music is the fruit. Music is where musical, musical artists go to paint, where songwriters write their poetry. Without music, how could we dance? But then who would want to? <laughs> and now, one of my very favorite sections of the book, Nature. When the last forest has burned, the last stream is polluted, and we can no longer breathe the air, then perhaps we will realize what we have done. Though our path through the woods may be circuitous, that doesn't mean it need be unpleasant. Part of the beauty is the way a snowflake knows how to flutter, fall to earth. They fall in harmony. If we see snowfall only as an elevation of the water table, we are missing half the snow show. <laughs> snowfall is a reminder to slow down, stay home, go outside and play. I never stood atop a mountain without feeling free. The crunch of the cold snow beneath my boots is stardust being released with the snowflakes. I went down to talk to a wilderness stream and we had a peaceful conversation. Be aware, undiscovered treasures can be present even in the ashes of annihilation. As the waves are expressions of the sea and the sunbeams are expressions of the sun, we too are expressions of a far greater energy source, the human spirit. And we too all spring from the same source. The sparkle of snow on a sunny day is starlight being released from the snowflakes. The magic of snow drifts and icy trees and the forest is more than a winter wonderland. I just don't know what to call it. Refreshing is good. Heavy snowfall is the rebirth of childhood. Snow angel. <laughs> oh, look at the good times. Snowflakes are like moments of time, unique, precious, short-lived, and incredible. As I step into the forest on an early Sunday morning, the woods was the alarm clock awakening all of my senses. In nature, man never exists alone. The silence of the forest meadow is a fontistry of our hikers who wished to explore the outer boundaries of thought. We all leave a footprint on our planet. What is yours? The dance of the clouds mirrors the dance of mankind only with less damage and they are lovelier. Time near the ocean is like going to a spa only with less distraction, risk, confusion, and cost. The high country is Mother Nature's gem. You can't walk up there without doing a great workout. 
No one ever planted a tree and felt like they had wasted their time. Man has cloaked nature in an illusory mask of progress to feel Earth's heartbeat walk barefoot on the beach. I breathe more deeply in the forest. Tired of mankind, find a mountain trail. Redwoods and sequoias are Mother Nature's cathedrals with their brothers and sisters being holy shrines. Why must man make life so difficult for other growing things? The hidden spirit of the wilderness speaks to us more clearly and more passionately in silence than through any words of mankind. John Denver brought a full backpack full of trash down with him every time he visited the high country. He truly walked his talk as a steward of the earth. I never felt alone in the presence of a tall ponderosa pine or a giant sequoia or golden aspen tree or a radiant apple, maple or a blue spruce or a brilliant oak or a... <laughs> you got it. Let not the aloneness of the forest be confused with loneliness. Being in the forest after a rain shower presents the fragrance of the trees after a bath. <laughs> rain running off a tree is nature telling mankind loves and endures. The sun's rays shooting through the opening in the clouds is Mother Nature smiling on earth. The sound of the drumbeat still echoes from the trunk of the giant sequoia you treasured as a child. Poetry is not about the forest, but rather poetry is the forest expressing itself. One of my most enjoyable trips was when I sat on the tailgate of my pickup truck listening to the little birds in my front yard tree cheer on the sunrise, <laughs> watching the aspen change in the shade of the pines on the distant mountain ridge. I traveled miles that day without turning a wheel. It is unwise to resist Mother Nature, though she be lovely at times. Never forget she can rip your lungs out. <laughs> The mountain sings loudly and proudly what is whispered in the valleys below. A pack can survive where a lone wolf couldn't. Autumn is Mother Nature's introduction for us into the sublime. There is no more pleasant sound than the harmony of a single leaf pirouetting down from an aspen tree. The whole forest silently applauds. <laughs> Steer manure converting the scrumptious succulent saw strawberries into strawberry shortcake. <laughs> Mother Nature's greatest miracle. We strive to have a bigger, more expensive, more elaborate home, but spend no time or effort on preserving the world on which it rests. In the deep woods, you are certain to discover something new and wonderful, no matter how many times you've been there before. <laughs> Trying to improve Mother Nature is a firm token of disrespect for her seniority. At home, I ask questions. In the forest by the mountain stream, I get answers. Hummingbirds are messengers that Mother Nature is not yet discouraged of mankind. A slow walk in the forest holding hands with you is a rapid journey on life's highest road. 
man and nature existed in harmony, then man insisted on more. Progress. Fragrant mountain flowers wake up more than one sense. I so love the store stars that I cannot find cause to fear the darkness. Lying on the mountain grass, looking up at the tree above makes a delightful you sandwich. The sky above, the grass below, you in the middle. Mankind's survival depends on learning to dance in harmony with all the forces of nature. To reset your energy, draw on the reserves of a beautiful mountain or the powerful sea or the silent sky or the paradisical forest or a raging, roaring river. The power is unlimited. Teddy Roosevelt reminded us the wilderness was more than a park. It was a necessary reminding that the land belongs to the American people. The symphony you heard in the woods as a child is still playing. Every citizen of nature gives as much as he takes the mountains sing of truth and the canyons echo in harmony. The breeze of the whispering pines will answer your questions about your problems as a thank you for giving them a moment. <laughs> I could never be lost in the wilderness. It all feels like home. Many novels take place in Colorado because the landscape is so lovely it can write half the novel itself. As a trout leaps out of the stream, the fly fisherman's soul leaps with it. To deprive ourselves of the wilderness is to miss the experience of half of our family. The mountains contain all of the latest important news. No drug or counselor compete with the lessons of nature. A 60 foot wave rocks more than the shoreline. <laughs> An hour on Elk Point Mountain at sunset is the seventh wonder. The elk or just the exclamation point. To experience a brilliant star shower, just walk out under the stars and let their gentle, radiant, magnificent light wash over you. The rustle of the woods leaves and fall, the forest sets an immutable table for lovers to feast on delectable pleasures not found in the city. The prettiest picture I ever owned was the mountain range framed by my A-frame picture window in Colorado. Someone asked me if I believed in reincarnation and I said no, but some Idaho rivers are so beautiful that I can remember them from three lifetimes ago. <laughs> uh, the forest fondly kisses my nose with the enchanting smell of fresh rain. I went to the mountain to feel the strength, the forest to be comforted, the river to feel cleansed, the aspens to feel connected, the, seal, the sea to feel the power, to the mountain meadow to feel the wildflowers, and to you to feel loved. No one disappointed. The babbling brook washes away all of the foolishness in your mind after an immeasurable time. Creekside. The sky speaks to the stillness of the forest and everyone hears it but us humans. Love is like sunshine 
There's plenty for everyone, even on a cloudy, stormy day. <laughs> From a small bluff on Hawaii's north shore, where I shared 40-foot waves with the beach, I was called away to a lovely seven-course dinner. I felt more nourished on the bluff. The sky and the ocean are alone almost all of the time. Perhaps that is why we see them as being so mighty. To avoid injury when falling, fall like a leaf. As I walked through the deep forest in the soft rain, my soul had an inside shower, and I paused to breathe in the ozone. My therapist told me that my time focusing on the shapes of clouds and trees was a waste of time. So I quit going to her and went back to the forest. As we focus on an external environment of clean air, water, and global warming, let us not forget to focus on an internal environment of kindness, love, joy, honesty, and decency. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Messages from the Crystal Star Ranch and Dr. Ted. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it so much. If you enjoy what we're doing, share it with others. Invite others to participate, to come and watch and listen and feel the uplifting that words can create in the soul. This is Dr. Ted with Dr. Ted Talks signing off. It's time for me to go feed and water the horses. Thanks again for being with us. We love you, and we invite you to be back with us for another exciting adventure through the book of We. Have a great day.